Hey, this is CUSD Math 8, Unit 5, Lesson 10 on piecewise linear functions. It says Lynn uses an app to graph the charge on her phone. And again, this is one we just kind of talked through a little bit here in case you are stuck on your homework. Wants to know when did she start using her phone? Um, when did she start charging her phone? And while she was using her phone, at what rate was Lynn's battery phone dying? And we can see here, this is hours after noon and we have a percentage of change. So this is kind of the battery life, right? A charge, sorry. So battery charge. We can see right here it's 100%. We can see it definitely drops down here to about 40 at this point here. And we have a no change area happening. And then we can see an increase going on right there back to the 100% mark. Just looking at the graph, we can see it's kind of flat and then it drops right here. This is our decrease in terms of the battery percentage charge and then a kind of flat spot and then an increase there. Okay, so when you're looking here, when does she start using your phone? We can say that, you know, when you use your phone, when you start using it, what are we gonna see? We're gonna start to see some sort of decrease in the amount of battery charge available at that point. When you start charging your phone, you would expect to see the battery life percentage start to go up at that point there. So you need to figure out where that is happening in those in the graph there based upon again an hour. So at what hour is it taking place at? While she was using her phone, at what rate was Lynn's phone battery dying? So rate's gonna be, when you talk about a rate, you're talking about um, how much percent uh, per hour is the rate. That's what our rate's gonna be. It's a percentage over the hour is what that rate is going to be is one way of thinking about it if you want to just think of percent per hour you can do it that way too all right but you want to take a look at where is it decreasing at which we see it decreasing here and then what rate is it dying at look at the hours you're talking about and how much it's decreasing to figure that part out all right move to number two number two says draw a graph that shows the number of miles until empty as a function of time okay so we're going to talk about the number of miles until empty dependent upon time. It's a function of time. Depends on the time here. Okay. Um, we're going to label and scale. So we labeled already. Number of miles until empty and time. On Monday morning, as Mr. Ramos left for school, his car showed 30 miles to empty. So that's our starting point. We're going to start here at 30, and we're going to go down to 0, okay? So that's our 0. He drove 12 miles to school, so we're going to go 12 miles, and then parked for 8 hours, and then he drove 5 miles to the gas station. Okay, so in terms of time, right, time's a little bit tricky here. Okay, we can look at time here. We're not sure how long this is taking him here, but we know that in terms of how far he's driving, and this is 30, I got 30 and 12, I can count it by maybe sixes. So we have six, 12, 18, 24, and 30. If we're gonna go 12 miles, uh, we can drop down and go 36, that gets you 18 miles. So we know that in terms of how much, that number of miles he can go until he's empty, as he drives to school, he goes down that far, right? He's gonna go that many miles, however long it took him, we don't really know just that he drove there. But then we know it took him um, eight hours he parks. So let's say this is gonna be hour one, all right, hour one. Then we can say hour, well, this is not gonna be quite to scale as if I do it like this, hour two, three, four, five, right? I need to add a lot of hours here. So we have hour two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, here's hour nine. So let's say it took him an hour to get there. We're gonna go all the way to hour nine where it doesn't do anything. It's just parked, parked for eight hours. And then he drove to the gas station five miles away, so then it's gonna decrease some more, whatever that's gonna be. Now, it's not gonna go all the way to empty because we just went a total of 12 miles there and five miles there, which combines to make 17, and he can go 30, which means that he has a total of 13 miles still to go on, his, on the chart here, right? Somewhere about 13 miles left to go. So, doesn't run out of gas, but he could go through two more miles. All right, so that's what you got. I guess that's what it looks like. Something like that. All right, number three. Mrs. Perry, um, 
uh, stacked reams of paper on a table at the back of her room. The height of the stack in inches off the floor is a functional relationship with the number of reams. So what we're saying here is that the height is a function of the number of reams. That's our x and our y. The height depends upon the number of reams, the table, uh, per table. The table is 30 inches high. Oh, that's interesting. So we already have a starting point there. So think of it like this. Here is our table. Okay. The table already is 30 inches high, and you're going to stack paper on top of it. Okay. So that's the height of the paper stack, but the paper stack also needs to include that 30 inches where you started from. Okay. So choose the quantity you will use as the independent and dependent variable. Well, our independent is going to be our number of reams of paper and the dependent is going to be the height because whatever the height is going to be depends upon how many reams of paper we use right if I change this it will change the height if I take away a book it changes the height so independent is the books what depends the dependent is the overall height so model relationship. Well, it's not just going to be y equals x, right? y equals x means they're exactly the same. And the reason for that is because there's this 30 inch starting point. So I have to include that. Every time I add a ream, I have to also add that to how much I'm starting with to begin with. Okay? It says, what does the y-intercept mean in this equation? Okay. So the y-intercept, you think about this, what's the y-intercept is 30. What does that 30 mean? So write a sentence about what that 30 means. Oh, I gotta back up real quick. It says that each ream is two inches high. So sorry about that. I need to include a two right there because that's the amount I wanna increase by. So if I have one ream, it's two inches plus a 30. If I have two reams, it's four inches. So I gotta include the two. Almost forgot about that. Okay, so what's that 30 mean? Describe here in a sentence what we talked about about that being the height of the table, your starting point. So if I had zero uh, reams of paper, I would still be at 30 inches high. That's the height of the table. If I had a one ream of paper, that would be at 30 plus 2, 32. If I had two, I'd be at 34, and so on. Okay? So you can complete that table there with some more values if you choose. I'm going to leave it right there for now. That's it for today. Have a great day, and we will see you next time.